I'm Nicole. And we are part of the C3 Reach team. C3 Reach is a global mosaic of churches that are part of the C3 movement. And we've got a great online experience lineup. We've got online worship. We've got an online kids church program. And we've got to hear from the word a little bit later on as well. That's, We're so excited. That's right. Yes, we're super pumped for that. So we'll see you a little bit later. See you. Hey church, it's so good to be with you today. I'm Pastor Jason. I'm Pastor Tara. And we're the pastors at C3 Reach Church Shell Harbour. And uh, it's so good that you can be with us online today. We're going to worship yeah. together soon. But first, I just want to encourage us today. You know, it's so important. Uh, the scriptures teach us about gathering together and not forsaking the gathering yeah. of uh, together with one another. And it's so important to build our faith and to allow the Holy Spirit to minister uh, to the body and also to the world. It's a bit different gathering together like this online, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But, but you know, we're, we're hoping that as restrictions are starting to lift, which is just really positive news, that um, you might be able to invite another family to join you on a Sunday and gather together. Yeah. Very um, good. Yeah. But I want to encourage you this morning that uh, God is with us yeah. by his Holy Spirit. And uh, I want to read to us quickly from Revelation 21. Uh, to and following it. And John, who's writing the book of Revelation, the Apostle John says, And I saw the holy city, that's a symbol of the church, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Mm -hmm. And I heard a, a loud voice uh, from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. Wow. God himself will be with them. And that's so important that we understand that as the new Jerusalem, as the bride of Christ, that that God is with his people. Amen. Behold, God is with us. And this morning as you worship and, yeah. and hear the word, our prayer is that you would know the fellowship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that God would be with you today. Awesome. And so Tara, why don't you pray yeah. for us this morning? Great. We're going to yeah. pray and then we're going to uh, worship. So if it helps you to stand... Um, why don't you stand where you are now? We're going to just position our hearts to enter Amen. the presence of God this morning. So, Heavenly Father, thank we you come Lord. before you this morning. We thank you that wherever we are, you are present in our midst. Yes, Lord. And, Father, we thank you that there are, there are no bounds mm. to your presence, Lord. You can yes, reach Jesus. us anywhere and father Amen. god you see every heart and as we bring our hearts before you in worship this yes, morning Lord. we welcome you holy spirit Amen. in Thank jesus you, mighty name amen, amen. We'll, we'll see, see you soon. after worship church
but Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light.
wasn't that a beautiful time of worship together, church? I just love bringing praise to Jesus. Mm. And um, I just love being part of worship in my own home. And whether you're in the car or on the lounge or in your kitchen, uh, it's just a good thing. It's a good thing to give him praise because he's worthy. Um, but right now we're going to come into a time of giving. And uh, this is also an act of our worship. So uh, Jason, will you share with us around our giving this morning? Yeah, absolutely. So on the top right of your screen, you'll see a tab there. And if you want to participate um, in this moment of giving, you yeah. can go to that and it will allow you to be able to give. Just make sure you, you use the memo in there, yeah. Shell Tithe. Yeah. and it will come directly into uh, C3 Rich Church, Church Shell Harbour. Yeah, uh, and, you know, this this morning, I'm, I'm thinking more from a, a visionary point of view this morning about what God has for us uh, on the other side of this season. You know, every season in life is useful. Yeah. There, you know, we know in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3, it talks about the seasons of God time for, for sowing and a time for reaping, mm. um, you know, all of these different seasons that mm. come into our life. And this season that we're in at the moment where we're under a, a bit of isolation, those some of those restrictions are starting to lift now. This has been a, a useful season to go into that closed room, to be able to sow, to be able to sow into prayer, yeah. sow into our relationships, not only with God, but with one another. But I'm aware um, on the other side of this season that God's kingdom even now is continuing to advance. Amen. We're seeing people reached, mm. we're seeing lives transformed. And I know that our giving today is going to be sowing directly into the future Amen. of the kingdom of Christ through C3 Rich Church Shell Harbour. And so as you give this morning, I want you to have absolute confidence that God is at work in yeah. us as a community, that his yeah. kingdom is growing, that people are being reached, and that as we give, these funds today are going to be multiplied by the Lord himself uh, into the projects that are on his heart for this community. Amen. And so as we give now this morning, Tara, why don't you pray mm. over our giving and let's bless it. Amen. Jesus, we just lift before you our tithe, Lord, and our yes, offerings, Lord. our giving this morning, Lord, unto you. We give with grateful hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and we would ask that you would take all that we give lord god and that you would use it father god powerfully for the expansion of your kingdom into Amen. people's lives thank you jesus into hearts into families into homes your kingdom come lord, lord god and we we thank you lord that you have a vision for this church lord god and you have a place for us you have a building yes lord lord we thank you that your people are faithful and uh, Lord, you're so faithful in our lives and we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. And we give to you with gratitude this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. We're going to move into a time of communion now. And communion is such a beautiful gift that Jesus left us with. He instructed us to use this time as an opportunity to remember him, to remember the hope of the cross to remember the hope that comes through his death and resurrection. As Jesus hung on the cross beside him were two criminals. And one of those criminals cried out to him and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus gave hope to a man in the most hopeless of situations. And then after that, Jesus cried out and he said, Father, I commit my spirit to you. This is not a statement of resignation, but a statement of incredible hope, incredible trust in God that God will resurrect him again. And so for us, as we have this time of communion together, we come to this place with such incredible hope that comes from the cross, that comes from Jesus' death and resurrection. We have hope that there is no one who is beyond saving, that there is no situation that we are facing which is beyond the help of Jesus. We come with incredible hope and trust that one day we also will be in paradise for all of eternity with Jesus. This is such a precious gift for us just to be able to stop and pause and reflect on Jesus. Can I encourage you right now, 
just to take the bread and the juice that you have prepared there. Maybe it's a piece of cracker or a little bit of water, whatever it is. Let's take these together in this time. Let's remember the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. His body that was broken for us on the cross. But the hope that came out of that situation. Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for the incredible sacrifice that you made on our behalf. We thank you, God, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus to die for us. People come to hear strange is neighbors the blood is more children of generations of every nation of kingdom come don't let your heart be troubled hold your hand
<laughs> Great to see you guys. Yes, we love kids so much here. Yeah, and, it's awesome. And we want to stay connected with you. Please. And um, there's lots of ways that you can do that. But what's happening today? Today, you can follow a link to look at the kids' church services. There's so much there. So, so you can take notes or you could screen record it or you could pull in the funniest faces you want to because... It's your house, you do as you please. Yes, but another way that you can stay connected and find out what's going on is to go onto our website yep. or onto our Instagram page. There's so much. It'd be so cool. And um, yeah, like we said, we want to stay connected because we love you. God bless you and have a good time at Kids Church this week. See you later. Bless kids. Hi Church, it's so good to be with you today. And uh, in a moment, we're going to uh, hear from the, the Word today. But uh, first, we just love to catch up with different people and to hear about what's going on in the life of the church. And today we have the lovely Raylene with us, and that's good to have you with us today. So Hi. welcome. <laughs> and, um, you know, just a little bit about Raylene's background. We, we love her dearly, and, and Raylene's okay for us to share this, but she's a single mum. And we've, we've really cut to different people in our community mm. and got a real sense of how they're traveling yeah but Raylene's our first single mum that we've had a chat with mm. and uh, it's going to be good to really unpack what's happening for her mm. in the life of the church and what the Lord's doing mm. in her heart yeah. so um, how have you been how are you and Rhiannon going yeah we're doing okay um, obviously we're living in very unique times mm. we are um, and that it affects every single person in yeah. our community yeah, um, unlike when we were dealing with the bushfires, there were certain people affected at yeah. different times. Yeah. And so, you know, we're able to support yeah. those people in that times because we're, you know, we're strong and we're unaffected in that yes. moment. And so we're able to help people who are affected. Mm. But yeah. with something like this, it's like Everyone every is single person is yes. affected. Mm. Absolutely. And our way of life and our habits and our... Like, I'm a touchy-feely. Like, I'm a very... Like I just naturally go to touch people when I talk to them and I caught myself and I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. It changes the way we meet. Yes. It does. Yes. 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 I met one of my um, like work customers recently for the first time and I straight away went to shake the man's hand and he said, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Just because it's such an automatic reaction. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, mm. I know you guys are huggers like me, yeah. and I'm a hugger, um, so that, that is a quite a difficult thing, yeah. um, you know, especially being a person just at home in, um, you know, a single parent household with just my daughter, and she's actually just had a week with her dad, right. so I was just very aware of yeah. um, just, you know, that, yeah. what that's like to be... Yeah. Just yeah. alone all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so there are lots. So you can of imagine for more elderly members of our community, yes. um, already struggling with an epidemic of loneliness. Yes. Yeah. How much more amplified that may be for yes. them, especially because they don't have access to the technology that a lot of us yes. younger people take have. For granted, yeah, yeah, we take for granted. Yes. Um, so I've but still yeah. been able to pick up the phone and chat with friends mm. and, yeah. um, and, you know, do some level of work where yeah. there's some kind of interaction there. Yes. And even though that's changed, 
Yeah. So yeah, being very mindful of mm -hmm. what that's like for um, people who are highly vulnerable or yeah. living alone and yeah. very isolated. So, so Raylene, tell us today, what has it been like for you um, at an emotional level? Have you been coping? Um, has it been difficult? Mm. Is it a bit of both? Tell us a bit yeah, more. Yeah, it's probably a bit of both yeah. um, because we have to process, one, the reality of what's going on mm. yeah. and we have to put those practical things in place. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm also a self-employed person yes. and this situation causes my... Um, capacity or my employment and my mm. income to take quite a hit. Yes. Yeah. Um, fortunately, you know, we have a fantastic financial support system in we this do. country. We and do. I'm very yeah. grateful about that. Mm. So, mm. you know, part of this week has been dealing with that, trying to deal with Centrelink and how that works and a system that's crashing yes. and things like that. But we have to just keep in mind that mm. um, it's just part of the process yeah. and that whilst it's difficult and frustrating to deal with, um, we're going to be provided for. Yeah. Like my rent's going to be paid, mm. there's going to be food on the table, um, Price gold, we're not yeah. going to be destitute. Yes. So dealing mm. with those practical things mm. and just trying to keep that balance of, mm. no, we don't like this situation that we're in, um, but there are some solutions there and we do have yeah. um, a, you know, a wonderful government safety net yeah. um, to yes. help us yeah. in this situation. Yeah. So there's just there's been those practical things. And then there's just the normal frustrations of having to wait, yeah. yes. the not knowing. Yes. Um, you know, it, it is a really, it's it's learning how to be okay with uncertainty. And I don't know if there's an easy answer for no. that. Yeah. Being not. flexible, yes. um, being able to change and adapt, mm. um, all those things. Yeah. 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 And part of the process of just processing that in our own mind and our own yeah. heart. Yeah. And balancing up, uh, you know, the level of fear, what's a real fear, mm. what's a perceived fear. Yes. Um, yeah. And making those decisions. So I think it's important that we process things. Yes. That's and really that we make a decision yeah. as to how to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Because being in that space of non decision is where I've noticed the, that the fear festers. The fear does, rules you yeah. rather than you getting a grip on it. Yes. And yes. you mentioned there what's real, what's perceived. <coughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about how you have dealt with fear in your own life yeah. in yeah. this season? Yeah, so um, I've been like mostly fine with it mm. um, until um, someone this morning actually shared their personal fear in this mm. situation um, mm. and you know my natural response was God's not given us a spirit of fear yeah. um, mm. but he's given us the capacity to um, you know to be in a place of love of yeah. power and sound thinking yes um, and I shared that um, and afterwards I had a moment of reflecting on the reasons why that particular person could be struggling with fear. Yes. Um, and in that moment, I recognise that that person also is a person that lives alone. Yeah. Um, and so I was processing what they might be afraid of, and then all of a sudden, the fear actually really hit me. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Because I was like, well, I'm a single parent as well, um, mm. you know, and um, even for a family, for one person in the household yeah. to contract this virus. There's a whole other level of challenges, mm. but whilst someone might be well, you've got someone there to kind of look after the one who's mm. not well. So I had like the, you know that moment of freak out, like, yeah. oh, well, you know, my dad's kind of, you know, he's over seventy, mm. he's high high risk. I wouldn't want to expose him. Yeah. I wouldn't want to expose my mum. I wouldn't want to expose my family. Um, so how my daughter, yeah, I who's going to look after her, me? <laughs> and I had this freak out of like. Who's going to look after me, and how will I cope with that? And and I had a little mini meltdown. Mm. Um, but in that moment, um, yeah. I had to just apply some strategies of mm. well, it it is a reality that that could happen. Mm. Um, and but we are um, doing what we can yeah. to self isolate, to yes. um, reduce yeah. the risk. 
Uh, when Everyone you consider doing their bit. the population yeah. of our nation, we've had relatively very Long, low amount yeah. of deaths. And so it was a part of processing mm. what is the, you know, the reality of the situation and just taking time to pray about it and mm. take it to God and say, God, in this moment, I feel afraid. Mm. Yeah, that's and, really good. Um, and taking so it to God. That, yeah. yeah. yeah Often we just stay in our fear and we lose sleep and we, yeah. you know, we get that yes. horrible fear in our mm. stomach yeah. and... That anxiety rises, but when we stop to invite Jesus into the middle yeah. of what that fear is for us, I think that's really key. And yeah. I, I just want to mention mm. one thing too, Church. Um, mm. You know, I think Raylene again represents a part of our community that um, has different needs mm. um, to to others. You know, some might have very young children, some might be grandparents or elderly. Mm. Raylene, as a single woman. Um, has different needs and I think this is a place for us to rise as the church you know and it says in James that um, the perfect religion as this is to care for widows and orphans and those in distress you know wow. and to keep oneself unstained by the world and I think you know in this time wow. we have an opportunity we, we have a, a mm. care arm in our church called C3 Cares and I just want you to know church that if you have any need it might be practical like food it might be prayer, it might be emotional support. That's right. Please reach out. Um, you have our number. You can get those details from Facebook. You yeah. can reach out and we would love to support you. And so it's been so good talking with you today, Raylene. And mm -hmm. we just want to take a moment to pray for you and Rhiannon and yep. to pray for those of you out there today. And so maybe mm -hmm. Tara, could you sure. pray today? Is that yeah, okay? We'll... Yeah, Thanks. let's do that. Heavenly Father, I just pray for um, the beautiful Rhiannon and Raylene. Yes, um, Raylene, who could be with us today for our, our couch chat, even though we're not on couches. Um, but God, I pray your blessing yes, and Lord. your protection over them, Lord. And I thank you yes, that Jesus. for whatever fear may attempt to enter our lives and hearts in this season, yes, God. Lord God, that, that you would be the answer yes. to that fear that you would be the answer to any need that we have. Mm. And that as the people of God, we yes, can come Lord. together in this time around each other in prayer mm. and support. Yes, Lord, Jesus. that you would prompt us to uh, make that phone call, that you would prompt us to be mm. there for one another. Yes, Lord. And that above all, your Holy Spirit would rest upon yes. each one of us and the peace of God would rule in our hearts. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. And I pray your blessing on... Raylene today and her family. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank so you. good to be with us today and uh, we'll see you soon. Hi there. My name is uh, Pastor Jason Kent. I'm the senior leader at C3 Reach Church Shell Harbour. And uh, wherever you're watching from today, I just want to warmly welcome you. And um, I hope is today that the, the word of God would minister to you and uh, wash over you, uh, that you'd be enriched in your relationship with the Lord today. And so um, for our church community, we've been in a season that we've titled uh, Meat, Not Milk. And um, we've been looking at, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the issue of the heart and uh, CPR. You know, how do we keep our hearts open and responsive and uh, whole before the Lord and uh, allowing God to minister to us at the deepest most innermost part of our humanity of our being and uh, i suppose kind of in that thread of um you know keeping um, our heart open and responsive to god i just wanted to touch today on the theme of forgiveness and so i suppose that it begs the question of all of us how are we going on the theme of forgiveness um, it's probably one of the most um important aspects of our humanity because it deals with our relationships. Uh, forgiveness isn't only an issue of God's love and demonstration of his love and forgiveness towards us through Christ, but it's also uh, a, a demonstration and an issue of our relationship to our fellow man, to our fellow um, neighbor to the people that we interact with and live with every day and inevitably in life um, we experience um, tragedy 
we experience um, you know, adverse circumstances, we uh, experience things that uh, come against us, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, but it leaves us with a choice. Do we uh, process these things? Do we deal with them God's way? Or do we um, you know, allow a bitter root to occur in our hearts? And I don't know if you've ever met a person that is racked with unforgiveness, but um, almost you know, physically they embody that. Um, that bitterness kind of takes over every aspect of their life. And uh, it it's almost adorns them like a, a necklace or something. And so, you know, um, I don't want to be a person in life who who stores up unforgiveness, but I want to be a person who daily brings my heart before the Lord and processes those griefs, processes those losses, and is able to, through Christ, make sense uh, and help God to help you know, to allow the Lord to help me to become um, resilient uh, in life. And so, how are we going with that? Are we, are we a person? Are you or I a person that stores up unforgiveness? Do we remember every single wrong? Do we keep a tally? Um, are we quick to forgive? Have we made a habit of blessing our enemies and, uh, and kind of moving on quickly from offences? And, um, and so these are some of the issues I want to explore with us this morning. And so our hearts are important. You know, we live, as I always say, we live from the inside out. And so, um, you know, I want to, uh, with you today, um, tackle some of these, um, these bigger issues, the meatier parts of our faith. And so turn with me today, if you've got your Bibles with you, or if you are um, got an online device, uh, to Matthew 18, 21 to 35. And... Um, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, and uh, I'm just going to read it through once and then go back and we'll break down a few of the, the verses here and comment on them. And so it says in uh, verse 21 of chapter 18, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what he was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that he was owed. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And so here we have quite a... Um, you know, uh, an incredible um, parable here of the importance of forgiveness, not only of our Heavenly Father towards us through Christ Jesus, but also this parable is centrally about our forgiveness uh, towards one another. And, uh, and so let's, let's make a few comments. Let's have a look at this passage together. It firstly opens and it says, Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. 
Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. I think it's interesting here that Peter is the one coming to Jesus. Um, in my mind, as I read the scriptures, Peter always strikes me as a, as a man who um, speaks first and then thinks later, um, as a man who is quite um, kind of ambitious and, uh, and hot-headed even. Um, I, I'm reminded in John 18, 10 of where Peter, even at Jesus' betrayal, is the first one to draw a sword and to strike the ear of Malchus, the, the high priest's servant, and to um, slash off his ear, you know. And, um, you know, so I'm kind of thinking, you know, Peter almost represents our hearts at times. We can be quick to want justice. We can be quick to question, do I really have to forgive this person again? And so these types of issues around forgiveness and the hurts that we experience, I imagine for Peter, he was very frustrated, maybe even with his fellow disciples. You know, do I really have to bear up with these types of issues perpetually? And the answer, of course, Jesus tells him is yes. You know, forgiveness is something that as humans, we need to practice daily. Daily, we, we get it wrong. We're, we're so diverse in our personalities, in our experiences, in our upbringings, in our culture, in our values. And we're likely to rub up against one another. It says in our Proverbs that as Iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And often I find it's in the conflict of life that our rough edges are revealed and even smoothed. And so it's important that we not just take offence and shut down or remove ourselves, but actually hang in there and actually work through a lot of these issues. And this is where forgiveness is needed, because more often than not, we're going to come across those issues more than once and we need to work them through. But if we're quick to not forgive um, and to remove ourselves, then um, that, that work is, remains incomplete. And so Peter, kind of, who's a bit of a hothead, is asking this question, how often do I need to forgive? And, um, you know, Jesus' response to Peter is uh, 70 times 7. Yeah, this is a perfect number. And metaphorically, it's kind of saying, Jesus is saying to Peter, we need to continually practice forgiveness. And so this is a, an important thing for all of us, that we are a people who are quick to forgive. Never make a pact that you will never forgive a person. Those types of um, pacts or agreements or covenants that we make with our words can be binding. You know, it says in, again, in Proverbs, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And often when we make words or statements or promises or covenants, um, that, if it's around the issue of forgiveness, can allow a bitter root to come down and to consume our hearts. And, um, you know, that's uh, not the way the Lord wants us to live. He wants us to live freely. And he wants us to grow. It goes on in verse 23. For this reason, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. You know, um, this, this man owed a lot. And in fact, what the parable is teaching us and what it's kind of saying here is the debt that was owed to the king. If we think of the king as our heavenly father, as our God, you know, the debt that the slave owed the king actually couldn't really be numbered. If we were to look at it even literally, um, it would be anywhere from $2.5 billion in today's currency through to even hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, it's a hyperbole here. It's an exaggerated example of debt. And the point here is that it's intended to show that the level of the man's debt, and in fact, that he couldn't even pay it back, even when he's on his knees pleading with God, or pleading with the king, sorry. Um, the king knew he'd never be able to to pay that debt back. And, um, yeah, this um, slave, in a way, represents us. We, too, were slaves to sin, and we had a, a great debt, the, the debt of um, sin, you know, that entangles us. And, and uh, you know, we weren't able in, in any way to, to deal with that sin, but God, through sending Christ, has forgiven us our debt. He's forgiven us 
our sins. He's lifted off our burdens. And we can't measure that, you know, our sins, you know, who can measure God's holiness or his perfection, you know. And so our sin has been paid for, though, through Jesus. And, um, you know, any kind of sin, you know, separates us from God, whether it's our defiance of who he is and our thanklessness for even acknowledging him for who he is, or whether it's the rebellion of our own ways. You know, these things, the whole human family is burdened by these types of sins. And, um, but it says in Hebrews 4.15 that Jesus was without sin. And so he was able to be the perfect sacrifice. And so in this story of the, the debtor, if you like, the, the king um, showed great mercy to that slave in forgiving him, you know, an incalculable debt. And in the same way, God has shown us mercy. And so in the same way, it would be, it would, you know, kind of be okay to, I suppose, take it even further and say that we are called in the same way to show mercy to, to others. And so even when we were helpless in our sins, it says that God sent Jesus for us. So here's a few thoughts around this passage that you know, this man could not pay his debt, but the king forgave him. And in the same way, we too have been forgiven of our sins. You know, in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is what we have received. And so it goes on in verse 28 to say, But that slave, so the one who had been forgiven much, um, went and found his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him into prison until he should pay back what he was owed. So his fellow slaves saw what had happened. They were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Have you ever encountered a scenario like this where someone has been forgiven or someone has been shown mercy and, um, or grace and, and yet they haven't extended that grace to others? It might be an area or a stronghold of, of uh, sin in their own life and yet they're quick to point the finger at others uh, because of the same sin even. And so I've had people even in our own church community at times fall into that trap of condemning others and we need to be really uh, careful when dealing with issues of sin in other people's lives you know we, we we know the saying in scripture take the log out of your own eye we need to remove it first before we inspect the speck of dust in our brother or sister's eye and so you know here we have a slave that has gone out seized his fellow slave and said hey pay me what you owe me but he's been quick to forget that God has forgiven him. And, and this is, I suppose, an example for us of what we should avoid. We shouldn't be quick to judge. We shouldn't be quick to settle accounts with others, but we should be quick to forgive. You know, in Luke 7, 47, um, we have the parable of the two debtors and Jesus, and it's similar to this parable that we're dealing with here. And then Jesus applies it to an immoral woman who's come in and and um, washed his feet and shown great love and remorse. And, um, and Jesus says, For this reason I say to you, her sins, which are many, have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little, loves little. And uh, I suppose, you know, we, we need to be aware that true repentance and forgiveness, and when someone has been forgiven of much, this it flows through into their behavior. To me, if I see someone that has acknowledged a sin, but then they go and they try to pull up someone else for that same sin, it shows me that the, the fruits of the forgiveness haven't really touched their heart. It hasn't touched their, their values, their morality, their behavior, the way in which they relate to others. If they're still quick to point out the sins of others, I want to encourage us today that to be a people who allow the forgiveness of God to transform the way that we love, the way that we forgive others, 
the way that we conduct our relationships. You know, I often think about Jesus in this sense. He was betrayed, he was crucified, and even on the cross before he gave up his life, you know, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And even as they were casting lots for his clothes, he was quick to forgive. I mean, I'll, I'll give it to him. He is the, the son of God, but he was also fully human and, uh, and needed to go there and even forgive the people that were, that, that were crucifying him. We, not be, we might not be crucified physically, but there are times that we are betrayed. There are times that we are mistreated. There are times that, that we're hurt. And how do we respond? Are we prepared to say, Lord, I can see that you know, they've got a huge history. They've been affected by sin themselves. They've been downtrodden or mistreated. And, and Lord, forgive them. I can see the bigger picture in their life. I can see why they've become the person that they are. And we're quick to maybe just hold off and suspend judgment. Um, you know, forgiveness, I find, takes time. It's not something that happens quickly. You don't just decide to forgive in a moment necessarily and it's gone. It, it can. I'm not saying it can't happen. But I find more often than not, forgiveness takes time and definitely a season where we are bringing it daily before the Lord. We're confessing it. We're bringing our casting our cares on the Lord, where we're talking to people that we trust, we are bringing it into the light. We're not allowing it to fester in our hearts as bitterness. Um, you know, we need to, in that sense, daily lay down our rights, our sense of injustice, our hurts, if we want to move towards wholeness in these areas. So just a few thoughts, you know, if God has forgiven us, we need to be quick to forgive others. Um, it says here in verse 32, Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have also had shown mercy on your fellow slave in the same way I'd shown mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed to him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And here we see Jesus being quite firm on this matter. It's not a, an easy thing, you know. If, if God has shown us forgiveness, I'm sure it's in the heart of the Father. You know, if I forgive my son and yet I see my son or my daughter mistreat their sibling, that hurts me as a father. I think I've taught you better than that. I've, you know, kind of forgiven you at times as you've learnt, as you've grown, as I've shown mercy to you. And as I know as a father, I want to see my children show that, that same level of love and mercy to one another. And so it's so important that we practice forgiveness, that in a sense we, we pay it forward if we understand that concept. Um, to do otherwise is hypocrisy. And so the very point here of Jesus' parable is revealed in the last line. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. So the whole point of Jesus framing this parable about forgiveness, about the debtors, about you know all that is going on in this narrative is to teach us about the importance of forgiving one another. If we're going to be kingdom people, if we're going to be a people that, that truly love, you know, truly love, then we need to be prepared to truly forgive. Because I, I believe that we can really only love one another as we come through not only the good times, but also the hard times. People and all of us can be too quick sometimes to disengage from relationships that are too difficult or that get, get a bit rocky. But if we can push through and forgive and practice forgiving, it doesn't mean to say that there's always going to be the same type of relationship. Sometimes if a, you know, if a sin is great, there is a, an adjustment in that relationship. The boundaries don't remain the same. But it doesn't mean to say we make a covenant to never forgive. So I want to encourage us in that today. And uh, so how do we 
how do we forgive and keep on forgiving? I just want to give us three practical little steps today. Things that, three things, be real, be open and be practical. Firstly, number one, be real. Yeah, tell the Father what you're feeling. Bring your wounds to him. And also be open as you're bringing it to him about even our part, your part, my part in the the playing out of that offence. Did we have a part in it? Is there something that we need to make right in so far as it depends on us? But we need to be real. We need to bring it before the Father and allow him to heal our wounds. It says he binds up the brokenhearted. He sets captives free. And so we need to allow the Father to heal and restore our hearts. That's the first thing. Be real. Talk about it. Don't shove it down. It's like you don't want it. It's like a beach ball. You can't keep a beach ball shoved down under the water. It'll just pop back up. So issues of forgiveness, we can't just bury them. We can't just kind of say, oh, it doesn't matter, or I'll forget about it, or I'll just, you know, kind of busy myself with life. We need to talk about it. We need to be real. In fact, in, in Matthew 18, it says, go to the person that has offended you or hurt you and talk to them about it, you know. And so we need to be actually guided here by the scriptures. If we want to have a godly outcome in these types of matters, we need to be prepared to follow the path that God outlines for us in scripture. So go to the person that has offended you. Talk to your heavenly father about it. Don't just bury it. And um, the next thing is be open. You might confide in a trusted Christian friend to keep you accountable in the process. Don't just keep it between God and you, but tell a trusted ear, a trusted friend, someone who will listen and not judge you. Be prepared to hear the whole story. But also be prepared to to get some godly advice too and maybe a different perspective on the situation. So be real, be real with God, be real with the the person that has even offended you. Be open with a trusted friend. Also be practical. Create new relational boundaries and forgive the person who has hurt you. You actually need to name the offence. You actually need to say, I forgive them, Lord, for whatever it is they did in prayer. It says, bless your enemies. Um, In Luke 6, 27 to 28, it says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And here we see the very heart of the gospel. The gospel isn't just all about good times. It's not just about kind of doing things when they suit us or, or being a Christian when times are good. It actually requires us to deal with all of the issues of life and to respond to everything that comes across us. And so, you know, there are times where I've found this in particular, where I actually bless those who have hurt me. I actually name them. I'm real about the issue. I'm open and honest. Might be my wife or a trusted friend. Hey, this is really hurting me at the moment. But I then uh, need to actually say, I forgive. I forgive that person. For hurting me or offending me and if even if it comes up further down the track it might be a year or two later or even longer i just go lord i forgive i forgive bless them lord they know not what they do and so and i find that through blessing my enemies and blessing those who mistreat me it actually sets me free and this is the goal god wants us to be free he doesn't want us to have a bitter root he doesn't want us to stew on the same issue so that we we become distorted and twisted by sin. He wants us to be free. And life is never ideal. We live in sometimes a chaotic world where lots of things are happening and people don't always intend to do what they've done, but we need to be quick to forgive, keep short accounts, move on quickly, and uh, cast our cares upon the Lord. You know, my heart for all of us is that we'd continue to be a people who continually forgive, and receive the grace from God to do so. That's my desire today. God's grace is towards those who humble themselves, who are looking to move in love. And my hope today is that if you need to forgive someone, that you'll be bold, that you'll take those steps, that you'll be be real, be open, be practical, and that you'll 
um, find freedom through forgiveness, through forgiving others, through showing mercy, through keeping a short account. You know, today, if you want to know the power of forgiveness, not only for others, but for yourself, you may not know the love of God. You may not know what it means to be free from sin. God has forgiven you and I a great debt through Christ Jesus. He's forgiven us of the burdens of our sins. And so today, if you want to come into relationship, if you want to know a good God, if you want to know a God who loves you, today he can remove your sins through inviting Christ. Christ is that perfect sacrifice. He came to die for our sins. He came to die for our imperfections. God forgave us when he sent Jesus of our sins. But we also need to personally receive that. And so today, if you want to be forgiven of all of your sins, if you want to receive forgiveness and also be a person who is able to forgive others, then today I'd encourage you to pray in a moment this prayer with me. I'd encourage you to invite Christ into your heart. And we do that by our ABCs. A, we ask Jesus to come and live in our hearts. B, we believe that Jesus died for our sins and rose again. And lastly, C, we confess Jesus publicly. In this season, it might be as simple as you phoning a friend and sharing that you've publicly made a decision to follow Christ. So right now, I'm going to pray with us. And if you just want to take a moment, I'm going to leave space in this prayer for you to respond. But pray these words now after me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be right with you. Forgive my sins. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. Jesus, come and live in my heart. Fill and baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or even again for, you know, many times you might have prayed it, that's okay. It's uh, Jesus' arms are always open to us. God loves us and is always wanting to uh, draw near to us. And so today, if you said that prayer again or for the first time, there's a, um, a tab in your top right hand corner of your screen. You can click on that and make contact with us. We have a gift for you. But uh, I just want to encourage you right now just to be a person that is quick to forgive. And uh, my prayer this week is that you'll be able to do business with God, that your heart would be free and that uh, you'll find um, true liberty through following the way of Christ. Hey, it's been so good to share with you today on this topic and uh, we hope to see you soon. Bless you. Hey church, hasn't it been awesome being together this morning in the so presence good. of God? We're really praying that you would go in strength into your week this week. We're mm. praying for you, Revelation 21, that you would go in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And uh, Jason, can you pray for us on as we close this yeah, morning? Yeah, awesome. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, for every person who is present in this moment. Lord God, that you'd bless them. I pray, Lord, out of Numbers 624 and out of uh, Deuteronomy 28, Lord, that your mercies and your blessings, Lord, would pursue those, Lord, who set their hearts towards you. Amen. Lord, I pray, God, today just for your richest blessings, Amen. body, soul and spirit, Lord, today on every believer. And Lord, for those who are yet to trust in you, we pray yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you, church. Yeah. Have Bless a fantastic you. week. We'll see you next Sunday. See you soon. Hey, wasn't that brilliant? We really yeah, hope you amazing. enjoyed our online experience. And don't forget to subscribe, follow the link and share this on to your friends and family. Yes, and we look forward to seeing you yeah. next week. We'll see you then. See you then.